So we have a few assortment of videos today for you guys to see directly in front of you. Hopefully you guys will enjoy these and also understand the fact that society is very complicated. A lot of conversations we will continuously have and seemingly some people will just refuse to understand anything. That's a damn shame. That's a damn shame. This girl is going to leave me up here. She's going to leave me up here because I won't give her none of my goddamn witness. That is a terrible shame. That's a terrible shame. She finna leave me up here because I won't give her none of my damn witness. You stay right here. I gave you five dollars. With them five dollars, you can. Uh, you had won five hundred dollars. You could have gave me. I told you I didn't have no money. You gave me five dollars, and I won five hundred. And I gave you your five dollars back. But you what you want me to give you? You won five hundred. If you wouldn't have had five dollars, you wouldn't have won that five hundred. I told you I didn't have no money. But now you do. Hey, I want. I gave you a five dollars bike. What you want? What you want? Catch an Uber bike. Catch an Uber bike. Girl, you is not gonna leave me in another whole city. Catch you is not gonna leave me in another whole city. Oh, for real? Y'all see this? Y'all see this girl finna leave me up here? I gave you five dollars. You them five dollars. You had one five hundred dollars. You could have gave me. I told you I didn't have no money. You gave me five dollars, and I won five hundred. And I gave you your five dollars bike. As an African living in the United States, I used to share the same sentiment that Africans share about African Americans because I had a hard time when I first moved here. People used to always tell me, you're not black enough, you're an Oreo, you're secretly white on the inside, as if I wasn't literally from Africa. But I now understand after living here for eight years that black in the United States is a very specific criteria and anything outside of that just doesn't fit. But I want to help African Americans understand that Africans coming to the United States are immigrants first and foremost. Then they are Nigerian or Senegalese or whatever country they're from. And then at some point they are black. But Africans don't put black high up on their identity well as much as African Americans do. And that is for legitimate reasons on both ends. And so when an African is coming to the United States, they're thinking to themselves, okay, I'm an immigrant here. I have to do my best for myself and my family back home. The sacrifices that took for me to get here were no light work, okay? So I need to really like align myself with what's going to make me successful in this country. And because it's the United States, it's the dominant culture, which is white American culture. And so Africans are going to instinctively ally themselves with the culture that's going to give them the most success. I mean, African Americans even admit that they have to code switch to be successful here because that's what brings success. And so Africans are like, all right, we'll do that. And it also doesn't help that for a long time, Africans are fed a very negative view of black American culture, and that's its own propaganda. But because Africans are so conservative and they're coming to a country where black americans have been labeled as the antithesis to this conservative traditional family values they have if anything more in common with like southern baptist white racist people but that aside going back to identity markers black americans put black first and foremost and then everything else goes below it and so they're thinking when an, another black people come to our country they're going to want to integrate with us the other black people because duh black comes first and they get quickly disappointed in realizing that for Africans, black and the identity and that coming is not first. Their immigrant identity comes first and then their country. And if anything, for us as Africans to feel like that's my brother, that's my brethren or whatever, you have to come from the same tribe as us because we have so many black people around, we don't automatically pre-select for black. But black Americans don't have so many black people around, have had to defend and protect their culture among, amidst a dominant white culture. And so they are already pre-select and are overprotective for black. And so that's why I think at the core of it, there's like a deep misunderstanding because of not realizing that we put, I, like where we put our identity markers and what we put first and what we prioritize are so different culturally because of our, tr our differences in trauma realistically and so it does make sense that black americans will be like oh my people my you know my brethren come here and african americans or africans sorry coming to the united states are like i'm just trying to make it here like you know it's a lot of work to emigrate to the united states and so 
y'all can stay over there and I can see why it's hurtful and I can see why it's taken personally and I can see the deep misunderstanding and the betrayal that African Americans feel but it's unfortunate and that's just a reality but if we can talk about it from this perspective I think we can get to a better understanding um, but I also believe that Africans that spend enough time in the United States get to this compassion and understanding of the Black American community because it is a very unique and specific set of circumstances for a culture to grow and to develop. Do you use a condom or raw dog, which is I do? Okay, right now I don't have a side dude, but like like before, okay, both my but they didn't know. Yeah, like I have to when I go. Fuck both of them wrong? Yeah. But they but they both thought we was in relationships. So we was both like So you had two relationships at once? Yeah. Well, one of, no, it's because one of them had really good and the other one was like just like perfect besides it was so whack. What made it perfect? He just like he just is what I needed him to be like. So you had like one dude that was like good with a piece of shit. Okay. And then the other dude was like caring. Got it. Paid the bills like up and like he just it was just so whack. So, so you needed both? Yeah, I needed both. How long did that last? Um, like s- six to eight months. Who found out? They, well, actually, the one who, like, who I, like, really liked, liked, found out. That's but, the one not, but not, because I actually, like, had a threesome with this girl and this other. Literally one of the most embarrassing things just happened to me, and I, it's, I have nobody to blame but myself. So I had a date with this man that we planned back on, like, Monday, right? So for a week now, we said we were going to meet on Saturday at 1 p.m. Saturday comes. Y'all know I'm a late-ass bitch. I can't be on time to save my life. I'm running late. I text him, like, hey, can we push back to 1.30? 1.30 comes. I'm just getting in my car. I call him, like, hey, I'm so sorry I'm running late. Da, 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 da. I'll be there in 10 minutes. I could hear it in the tone of his voice that he was pissed off. I'm like... I get there, I call him, no answer. I text him, like, hey, I'm here. He's like, yeah, I left. You're wasting my time. Enjoy yourself. So, I say all that to say, be on time, y'all. Be on time because I have nobody to blame but myself. And I'm not going to lie. I'm still finna have a time. I'm about to go grab me a little drinky drink at this restaurant and shop maybe a little bit. Like, it is what it is. Like, you win some, you lose some. Nonetheless... If it was me, I would be upset because don't waste my time. So I get it. Anyways, yeah. Whatever. Instead of talking to each other, you'll turn to me and you'll tell me to not worry about it, to calm down. It's not a big deal. And it's like, it is a big deal to me. Your comments, like your comments, your comments hit deep because they're not just your comments. They're comments from a lot of other people as well. And it's a constant reminder that it doesn't matter what I do. I'm having to fight for my humanity as a brown person to get you to accept that I'm more than just the color of my skin. I am a person. I have an emotion. I have emotions. I have a personality. I'm smart. I'm intelligent. But you reduce me to the color of my skin. And that's all. That's all you expect from me. And when you say things like, I only date white girls, what you're saying is, Every other person of every other race has features that are the same, that I don't find attractive, and you don't give them their humanity. You don't see them as humans with personalities, things that you can love about them. You see them as what they look like, and that is it, and you're missing out. (laughs) You're missing out. So yes, I'm sorry I'm crying and I'm a hot mess, but this is me asking you and you and your white friends, your male friends, to just like be a little bit more open-minded and empathetic when it comes to making racist or racially insensitive comments and passing them around your friends, especially if a person of color is standing right there like, come on, please, give me a fucking break. And you don't have to sit them down and educate them about the history of racism. Calling out your friends can be as simple as just saying, that was a weird comment, please don't say that again. And I promise you, I won't try to pursue you, but I'll buy you a fucking drink if you stick up for racism and you're around me. Because, like, it's never been done before, unfortunately. And I always end up (laughs) like this. (laughs) But, yeah, thank you uh, for this PSA. And I'm so sorry I have just downed all my emotions on you. But, yes, white men, please realize the power of your words. And please, please, 
uh, I'm, I'm begging you, honestly, just like think twice before saying something and maybe just like think about calling out your friends next time they say something like that.